Young Lives is a multidisciplinary study that aims to improve our understanding of childhood poverty and generate evidence for policymakers to improve or to make a real change in the lives of these children and their families. Young Lives has followed nearly 12,000 children over 15 years, that is since early childhood into adulthood, in four low and middle income countries. The study has two cohorts or groups of children. The younger group or the younger cohort was one year old when we started in 2002 and the older cohort children were eight years old. So far these children have been visited for interviews five times. Children of the right age in 2002 were randomly selected from 20 communities in each country. We call them sentinel sites. These sentinel sites were purposely selected to represent the poorer areas in each of the four countries, but they were also chosen to represent the geographic, the ethnic and the livelihood diversity in these countries. Young Lives collects lots of different types of information about children, their families and their communities, such as education, health, employment, and also the expectations they have about their future in terms of education, labor market, marriage, and also having children. For the data collection process, we rely on local partner institutions and they are the ones putting in place teams of field workers every three or four years. These people travel to the communities where the children and their families live. The first thing they need to do is to seek consent from these people, that is asking them if they are still happy in being part of uh, Young Lives and if they are still happy being interviewed. Some of the field workers have been with Young Lives since round one. So they have developed this personal relationship with the people, so whenever they go there, they trust the program, they trust the people, so that is one of the most important features of Young Lives. The way of collecting the data has changed quite a lot in these 15 years. Initially, for the first two rounds of data collection, we used paper-based questionnaires. And after round two, Young Lives considered the idea of replacing these paper-based questionnaires with a computer-assisted personal interviewing, which is also called CAPI. With CAPI, field workers were able to load the questionnaires on any electronic device. The benefits are widely acknowledged because you get the data very easily and very fast, but you need to train your field workers not only in the content of the questionnaire, but also in using a new technology and a new software, and that takes a long time. What we need to do is to make sure that there is no information in our questionnaires that are going to be used to link or to identify the children in our communities. Once we are completely sure that the data is clean and safe, we deposit all the data in the UK data service. From there, any researcher or any policymaker or basically anyone who is interested in working with the data can access it and download it freely. When you get to this point, to round five, you start thinking of this as a legacy. And I think the data that Young Lives has up to this point is just a great legacy for everyone, for all the researchers and all the policymakers who are interested in making the lives of these children much, much better.